Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at part 3 in the Critical Delay series of 4. Today's video includes Ivara's bow, arm cannons, and more. So as you may have seen in previous build videos, Ivara's bow is perfect for Critical Delay for numerous reasons. It features very well in concentrated arrow as well as non-concentrated arrow builds. Why is this? Well, the charge rate for Artemis bow is actually just for show. You can tap shoot this as fast as you can for a vertical spread, charging it only changes it to a horizontal. Now on a concentrated arrow build, we have force impact procs, meaning it will benefit both from internal bleeding as well as 70% proc rate for slash conversion due to the slow charge. Primed Firestorm acts pretty much as a free overextended with no penalty. Now this is just a very rough estimate of a concentrated arrow build that I'm using for the testing. The main purpose here is we got a decent amount of strength and a decent amount of range. I have a little bit of efficiency here as well so the arrows don't take up too much energy. Vigorous Swap is also handy here as you can easily tap the bow between the pistol and itself to proc. Arcane Rage is also super handy because you'll be proccing headshots anyways to get the explosion. Prime Firestorm will be scaling off the base range of the explosion, totaling up to about something like 17 meters. Now I'm gonna shoot these heavy gunners in the head. If I shoot the two in the middle, the resulting slash procs in the AoE are enough to kill all of them at once. Now let's try this again shooting at the edge. Even if I shoot the furthest one away, well, the first one didn't proc slash on it here, but the second one did, and we can still kill the heavy gunner at the edge of the radius. Even at 10 meters away, it is still well within the lethal radius. But what if we don't want to run a concentrated arrow build? Well, this works very well on non-concentrated arrow also. Instead, we'll be running hunter ammunition since we lose the force impact procs. We're still sticking with critical delay for that extra crit chance. Now, we no longer have a use for prime firestorm, so instead we're going to run vigilante armaments for extra damage as well as more slash procs. I'm going to switch over to my Bow Eidolon build since that is a little bit more practical as Concentrated Arrow is useless here and Powered Quiver will be handy for making you status immune as well as other different effects. First I'm going to show you how it performs without Vigorous Swap. You can see that they'll die instantly to 2 slash procs. Now let's try this again with Vigorous Swap. Note that I don't even have Arcane Rage proc'd. Vigor Swap is strong enough that a single slash tick is enough to completely delete them off the tile. Now you may also be wondering, how about for Eidolons since you don't need to charge the shots? Well, yes, it also benefits there for Eidolons as well. The only difference from the build is you'll be running critical delay instead of point strike. Unfortunately, I can't fit all three builds onto these given polarities, but this is what you would have run here. It'd just be 71.8 instead of 62.5%. I'm going to be running the same Ivara build here once again with Arcane Rage, which is super easy to proc with a massive head. You have Vigorous Swap as well. The important part here is running Empowered Quiver, as cap shots will be a little bit difficult. If you stand on your wire for the crit damage bonus as well as Prowl and you shoot at the head, it should be a complete overkill and an easy one tap. Remember that we gotta switch off Corrosive Projection to enemy radar, as the level 110 Drakar Manning Bombards are calibrated with no CPs to simulate a 0 CP tear list, so let's shoot them up. You'll see I'm specifically avoiding headshots, and I'm only doing a little more than a quarter damage, but that is fine, because remember in Ivar Hunt, you're normally shooting through Volt Shields, which will more than double your damage. You'll also have Harrow buffs, as well as 4 CPs instead of 0. So I'm going to shoot them one more time to simulate what the Volt Shield might do. We're taking out about 3 quarters of their health, so honestly, if you throw in Covenant and 4 CPs in this scenario, it's a very easy one-shot. Now that we've seen all the Artemis builds, let's check out the next weapon, Dexibarus. Dexibarus functions a lot like a budget Tiburon Prime. As another burst weapon, the fire rate honestly isn't that affected with the penalty from critical delay, as fire rate only increases or reduces the delay between shots and not the shot itself. This is a standard viral build with your 60-60s as well as Hunter Munition so we can scale the slash procs off of the status. Now before I do this test, I'm going to switch back on to Corrosive Projection for the Heavy Gunners as well as taking off Arcane Rage as I want Dex Sibris to be usable on all setups and not just Ivara. The important part here is you want to focus and land all the headshots possible. I'm going to be going through all 8 of these Heavy Gunners and you'll notice it takes between 2-3 to three bursts to take them out depending on whether or not Viral wants the proc in combination with the slash setups. If you get 2 or 3 slash procs, they will die no matter what. If you proc viral, you'll be able to kill them with one slash proc. So it's a little bit of an RNG here, but I feel it is a pretty good budget Tiburon Prime. If you do have Tiburon though, I'd suggest that instead.
Now let's take a look at our next weapon. Our featured arm cannon today is the Shidu. Now critical delay actually brings a very interesting interaction to the table. You'll notice that it does push the critical chance up from 64 to 71.8, however it does take a huge cut out of the fire rate on the weapon. But the big part here is it slows the fire rate down just enough that you regenerate the shot before you shoot another one, basically giving you infinite ammo and always being able to shoot. We have a viral heat set up here on the primary shot as well as the explosion doing viral electric. This gives you a little bit of CC while also being able to pile on the heat procs to do a little bit of DOT while also fueling the slash off Hunter's munitions. You'll see I'm able to kill them pretty much very easily with 3-4 to four shots every single time, however you still need to make sure to aim at the head. The little bit of AoE here is good for CCing them with electric procs, however it won't really do good on killing them. On the other hand, it will prime them up with a little bit of viral, letting you clean up shop very quickly. You can actually go all the way down to a rank 3 critical delay here and still maintain that infinite ammo, however you do take a pretty big penalty to the crit chance so I'd suggest sticking to rank 4 if you still want similar performance to point strike. Now the biggest difference here is if you can bring a ribbon into the picture and replace vital sense. I'm running a critical damage multi-shot ribbon which is actually super strong because what this lets you do is increase your damage through more multi-shot and slash procs as well as viral. So it's actually more than just having oh an extra 1.5 times the amount of multi-shot and now you can actually kill them in 2-3 to three shots easily priming everything else around them. Now for our last weapon we'll be looking at today, it is Tenora. Tenora is a very interesting case where critical delay significantly benefits the vanilla variant even though the prime exists. I'm gonna slot it in here and set up point strike. The alt fire actually nearly reaches 100%. We're running a viral hunter munitions build with a focus on piling up the viral with the primary fire. You can actually kill them off this way with the amount of slash procs and viral you set up very quickly. The alt fire is also very lethal, but only if you get the hunter munitions to proc, otherwise it's dead in the water. You can also use the primary fire to build up viral stacks for the alt fire, where if you do get the slash procs, it just completely annihilates them. However, you need to know on the other hand, the prime exists, and we can take this same build here, where it has a little bit extra fire rate, bringing back a little bit of the potency again, because I felt the vanilla was a little bit too slow for my liking. The alt fire also already reaches 100% with just point strikes since it had a critical chance buff with its priming. So actually you get a chance at orange procs with the alt fire. Now if I shoot the heavy gunners in the head you'll notice they're dying a little bit more easily because the prime also got a buff on the status chance as well as the base damage. If we do use the alt fire you can see you can actually kill them outright when hunters munitions procs and if you prime them with the primary fire it just does insane amounts of damage. But there is one other caveat to bring to the table. Tenora Prime has complete trash disposition, whereas Vanilla has a very good one sitting at around 1.1. What this means is if you roll a crit chance multi-shot ribbon, you can just completely drop critical delay, reaping the benefits of high critical chance even higher than critical delay without any of the penalties, and then also bringing over 110% multi-shot to the table, letting you hit 3.0 on the alt fire. Now it just does insane amounts of damage by preserving the original fire rate of the Riven while having even more crit chance and more multi-shot. If you choose to use the alt fire, it performs just like before, however being a little bit more snappy. The extra multi-shot lets you pile on even more viral and an even higher chance of the slash procs by having guaranteed 3 bullets on every hit. If you don't like the mixed viral heat setup that I was running, you can actually run bladed rounds instead so that the heads don't move. This way you won't be able to stack the massive DOTs of heat on top of the slash if they survive the initial onslaught, say on steel path, but now you'll be able to take full advantage of the extra damage from bladed rounds without having them wave around their heads due to the CC from the heat procs. The heat build does have a higher damage ceiling, but only if you manage to nail everything, so the bladed rounds may suit your playstyle better. Well that's it for part 3 of the Critical Delay series, I hope you liked what you saw today. If this is your first time watching, feel free to hit that like button, or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 74% of you are not subscribed, I'll be making sure to be the first to get information out on Tempest Starry when it drops so you may want to reconsider that. That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching and see you all next time.